hello and welcome to this affinity photo tutorial where we'll be looking at sort of altering the landscape of an image and particularly the foreground interest within that image now i'm going to look at two different images both from pixabay.com and both were inspired by two different photoshop tut tutorials and the first one is of this stag which is a sort of blurred foreground at the front and the second one is this river image which is like the focus of the image is pretty good from front to back um, I will add links to both these images in the description for this video in case you sort of want to follow along so I'm going to look, work on the stag image first now if you are lucky enough to sort of stumble across you know, a stag or what have you and you've got the the time to take a picture you may not have necessarily have time to get everything as you want it and in this case I mean it's a very good picture but you may want for example to sort of extend the out of focus area that's in the foreground here a bit closer to where the stag is um, so to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the freehand selection tool which is part of the marquee menu and once I have that selected I'm going to have it selecting freehand which is the first icon up here in the left so just click on that and make sure you're on freehand and then I'm just going to come sort of outside of the image doesn't matter whether it's the left side or right side and I'm going to click and keep the left mouse button held down and just freehand draw a selection now I'm going to select only the really out of focus areas um, I don't want anything that's too in focus so you don't have to be pixel perfect it's just a sort of rough selection so I'll click on the outside start dragging and get the area that I want come out and then down once you come outside the picture come down along the bottom and back up to the other side to the start position and let go of the mouse button and that will make your selection now so once we have this area selected I'm going to click on refine and I'm going to feather this quite high and let's go to about the 70-ish 70, 70 to 80 mark so that is a fine selection there and when it's got down here output I'm going to change that to new layer and then when I click apply it will put that area that I've selected on the new layer and it will turn off the background but I'm going to turn it back on again so if I click on apply as you can see that selection is now been put onto a new layer and the background's been turned off so I'll just turn the background back on again and making sure that the area I selected layer is highlighted I can come to the move tool and I can move this up and I can resize it so I'll make this bigger and make it quite big now and I can even flip it around so we come to a range and flip horizontally and just sort of position it where you want it to be I mean it's even bigger still and this is a for example I leave it there I know it looks pretty rubbish at the moment but what I'm going to do is crop this down um, because the stag is in the, sort of pretty much in the middle of the picture 
and I want it to sort of to be to one side so I'm just going to select the crop tool and sort of put this on the rule of thirds intersection there but I might bring this up a bit bring that up a bit so it's not so close to his antlers let's go that way I think and when I'm fairly happy with that I will just double click on the area and bring that in to be cropped down so the stag is now slight to one side and more of a main feature of the image but also we've got this sort of out of focus area here so if I turn that layer off if it's then been cropped without that happening this I mean it's still a good picture I'm not knocking the picture but if you wanted to add a little bit of more blurred foliage using the foliage that was already in the picture you know I don't have to worry about sort of getting the colors right if you know if I'd sort of dragged in a secondary picture to do that because it was taken or taken from the same picture the blending and the colors are all okay so that is one thing that you can do if you have a blurred background you can select it make it a bit bigger move it around and get it to where you want it to be so moving on to the river image now again it's a perfectly good picture I'm not knocking the picture um, but when you sort of take a picture like this you're sort of stuck with whatever's in front of you you know the boulder so you know this main boulder here is obviously the sort of foreground interest that sort of draws your eye or possibly these ones over here and but you may want to make them bigger or reduce them in size if they're too big and sort of, sort of taking the interest away from the background so but they're things you can't alter in the field because you obviously you can't lift up a big boulder and move it out of the way or what have you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these boulders these three or four boulders down here a bit bigger make them more prominent within the picture and it's going to be similar to what I did with the other image in the fact that I'm going to use the freehand selection tool to make a selection of these and again it's only going to be rough selection so again I'll click outside the picture keeping the mouse button held down I'm just going to draw around them as as well as I can and then come back this way back to the start position let go of the mouse button and that area will be selected now I'm going to use the refine option and I'm going I'm not going to favor it so much just a little bit probably around 10 and it's on 9 pixels that will do and again like before I will make a new layer of this again you could make it with a mask um, which is one of the options um, but I'm, for now I'm just going to leave this on new layer and click apply so like before it has made a, a layer of just that and turned off the background so let me turn this back on then I'm going to uh, select the move tool and this pixel layer is still highlighted and I'm just going to make these bigger now I'm going to keep the, I want to keep these in proportion so I'm going to hold down the control key when I click and drag this corner out let's put that there just move that up a bit to about there maybe make it a tad bigger right so move that over there maybe about there so as you can see that the those rocks are now much bigger within the foreground 
and sort of help in my opinion help make this bigger boulder sort of make some more a part of that sort of area and the problem is obviously we do have areas where these are touching and overlapping now this is where the mask bit you know I just wanted to sort of highlight the fact why in this location you may have wanted a mask you could obviously at this point use the eraser tool and sort of just erase and try and blend these in a bit better and the danger of that is it is destructive and once you've sort of erased you can't go back which is why making this particular sort of way of doing things is better with a mask that's not a problem we can add a mask now so with that layer highlighted if I just click on this icon here which looks a bit like the sort of Japanese flag you click on that it will add a layer mask to the highlighted layer which in this case was the pixel foreground images that I've added and this will add a white layer mask which doesn't do anything at the moment it just allows everything to be seen so we just need to sort of hide certain areas and to do that we need to paint black so if I get the paintbrush tool make sure that black is my foreground color and then we have well I'll, I'll alter the size in a minute but I'm going to have a fairly low opacity of about 25% and hardness is on zero now I can alter the paintbrush size by the left or right square bracket keys so that is the right which it increases and that is the left that decreases and making sure there is the mask that is highlighted I can paint onto the mask in black and sort of just reveal some of that background image that I want to bring back and just blend this slightly increased boulders image layer and just make them blend in a bit better so so I think that do I think I mean obviously you could be a bit more precise if, when you're doing your own images but that is a lot less noticeable now so if I turn if I highlight that pixel layer and turn that that was what those rocks looked like and they're now a bit bigger and fill up the foreground a bit better so that's just two options at looking at altering the foreground be it blurry or in focus to sort of get the image that you was originally trying to get or would like to have got um, depending on the circumstances so hopefully that is sort of clear for everybody thank you for watching and goodbye